Hey everybody, welcome to Our Watch. I am Tim Thompson and we've got a great program for you today. We're going to be talking to a member of the school board in Chino Hills and you know a lot is happening up there. Uh, so we're going to get the update and find out what's going on. Want to Before we do that, I want to invite you to go to ourwatch.com. Love for you to subscribe, become one of our watchmen. We really appreciate that. As you know, we put content out that is real, it is true. Uh, and as you do those kind of things, every social media platform seems to want to stop that from happening. So the best way to make sure you get that information is go to rwatch.com and subscribe to become one of our watchmen. Also, if you would like this video, share it out with your friends, your family, your neighbors. We would truly appreciate that. Uh, that being said, we do have an amazing guest today. Sonia Shaw is with us from the Chino Hills, uh, Chino Valley. What Chino is it? Chino Valley, Chino Valley yeah. uh, School District. So Sonia, thank you so much for being with us. Awesome. Thank you for having me. It's, it's a blessing, blessing and an honor. Yeah, well, I, I really appreciate all that you have been doing for not just your own community, but really what you're doing is is something important for our whole nation. It affects not just you know the Chino area, yeah. but also California. And as we know, and I, one of the very few times I've agreed with our governor, as California goes, so goes the nation. Absolutely. I, I really believe that's the case. Um, and so it's important for people like you to do what, what you do. I want to talk to you about AB 1955. But before we get into the AB 1955, just for the, the sake of some of my viewers who might not know you, I'm sure that most of them already know who you are, but, but a little bit about yourself and why you decided to run for school board. Absolutely. I'll give you the short story. Right. Um, but I was a mom during the shutdown uh, that was never involved in anything political until I realized we had a moral obligation. Um, I saw what was happening firsthand behind the scenes in some of the classrooms when they went online. My kids had different um, a different experience. I was able to pull them out and put them in an online charter. With that said, though, my me and my husband always wanted to bring them back. We loved Chino. I was born and raised in Chino. That's where we decided to, you know, um, have a family and raise our family there. So when I started seeing all those things, we knew something had to change. It was like a crash course for a lot of us parents. We didn't even, most of us didn't even know what a school board was. We didn't know that we elect those members because we never were involved in actual elections like we should have been, right? But a lot of us had different childhoods where maybe that wasn't um, a priority in the home or we didn't even have much awareness of it. With that said, I'm, I'm not posting blame. It's my fault for not getting involved, but I'm definitely involved in the past four years. Mm -hmm. Um, when we did find out what a school board was, we saw our majority was not in, they didn't have the best interest of children and families. We were asking them to be advocates alongside us as we were now reaching out to elected officials, which we never did. I mean, we were learning everything. I became the president of a grassroots organization in Chino. We eventually knew if we were going to have any voice, we had to connect with other parents. That's when we started connecting with parents in Temecula, Marietta, all, all over, right? Um, because we realized it was the machine, it was the political cartel in Sacramento that us parents were fighting against. It wasn't just our own school boards. Um, we kept hearing about the laws. So with that said, uh, um, an election was coming up. And my job as the leader of the organization that we, you know, just a bunch of parents concerned, was to find some um, candidates. We went out, we found one great candidate, and we were learning what the GOP was. We were going to their meetings, we were speaking on behalf of parents there. I was told you cannot bank on one candidate. You have two seats up. With that said, I went home on a Zoom with all the moms and the one dad. Um, that was part of our, what we called our leadership group. Mind you, there was no book that we were following. It's just, like I said, a bunch of parents trying to find a solution to protect children. I said to all the moms then and the dad, I don't know if he was on that Zoom that night, but regardless, I said, one of you lives in that area. We were learning maps because trustee areas were new to our, our community. And I said, pull up your addresses. Kelly is the mom that learned the maps. Kelly pulled up the maps, went through every address. It comes to mine. We're hitting around 11, 1130 at night, and my address was on the line. With that said, the moms were like, Shaw 2022, <laughs> went upstairs, told my husband, babe, I think we might need to consider running for school board. And he goes, we don't live in the area because, you know, we were just learning the maps, so we never even considered it. And I was like, we're on the line. And he said, well, then God opened the door. Let's do this. And from there, we went against a machine. The person we ran against, and I say we because my voice was always for our community, not just my own. Um, they came out with Planned Parenthood and every other special interest group supporting them. You're talking about the teachers unions. You're talking about people in the White House, employees, Meta. Um, you've seen recent attacks from Meta on me. I, I have to question why that was. But anyways, $150,000 to run against me, the soccer mom backed up by the community. 
we won the seat, and from there, here we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you've done an amazing job as the board president. You, you went up against Tony Thurman uh, very, very boldly. Um, in fact, kicked him out. Yeah, I would yeah. have to question kicked out, but <laughs> Tony Thurman and our community have a long history because as parents, yeah. when we were finding out who's who, we were reaching out to him and we were being ignored. Our kids were being ignored. Their needs were being ignored. Mm -hmm. um, he actually came down off his throne from Sacramento to come walk against us. Um, during the election. So it was like, how could you do that? We're just parents. We're, it's not like we want anything radical. We just want our kids to learn right. in a safe environment. Right. Um, so when he came to our board meeting, he was trying to dictate everything. I wasn't having it. I, and as I should. I mean, if we, we've been to Sacramento, you and I have been to Sacramento, we can't break their rules. And he thought he was above the rules. So when right. I told him to have a seat, he didn't want to have a seat. And yes, I did put him on record for what he's doing because he should be on record mm -hmm. for what he's doing. Yeah. People think of the Department of Ed at this, as this big old um, entity that gives you all the money. Well, technically, no. Why are you giving them that opportunity? The funding model comes through California and the state and the federal government. They have grants, but we see what those grants are about. They're to tie your hands into things that none of us would want for our kids, right? right. Um, our kids are failing at reading, writing, and math. This dude isn't focusing on that. And when he said that, I'm like, I'm sorry. We're, I'm, I'm grateful you came. But you didn't also come as a parent. You came on our taxpayer dollars. So let's not pretend like you're over here as a parent speaking at the podium. And you're coming because you have special interest backing your agenda. So after he, I let him speak just like everybody else. I, I didn't break any rules. And I let him have what we were all thinking. Yeah. Well, and good for you. Yeah, you, you were representing the people, which is exactly. one of the biggest problems I've seen with school boards across our, our state and even our nation is, um, you know, I, I know, as you know, I've been to so many school board yeah. meetings. And what I hear very consistently is, well, the state says this and the state says yep. that. And, and I'm telling the school board members, stop representing the state to me. Yes. That's not how this is supposed to work. You're supposed to represent me to the state. Stop telling me what the state says and go tell the state what I say. Exactly. And that's how this is supposed to work. That's what you have been doing. We're very grateful for that. Um, one of the, the main things that I've always been really advocating for is the rights of parents to direct the upbringing of their children. Mm -hmm. And especially with things that are, are life-changing events for a child. And certainly the issue of gender has come up quite a bit in our culture. And you know the, the question of whether or not a child should be able to change their gender pronouns and, and stuff like that at schools without the parent's knowledge or consent has become a point of contention for, for many people. And that got brought up to you and your board. And if you would talk a little bit about the policy you guys put together, why you put it together. Absolutely. So Back up to when I was a parent, we were asking them exactly what you said. Well, be our voice. We elected you, apparently, to be our voice. Stop saying that you're just going to sign at the line, even knowing it's endangering children, right? It's not in the best interest. And so with that said, when I saw uh, Bill Aselli, AB 1314, come out and, and propose a bill that said, in regards to this, then coming finding out us as school board, mind you, I was a new, newly seated school board member, newly I was a, the president, and I'm still doing what I promised our community in the very beginning. This is in the very first few months that I was there. And I see AB 1314, and I'm like, as a school board, we're going to support this. Finally, there's something from Sacramento we're going to support. So we're going to do a resolution, and we're going to support this so we can write letters, not only as parents, because our parents are, are amazing, um, especially with you know our church having an influence of writing letters to the elective officials. But we needed an elected body to represent us, too. That's what we wanted. So I said, we're going to do the resolution so we could support this through the process as Chino Valley Unified School District. With that said, apparently that was controversial. Um, Bill Aselli ended up coming to our meeting that time that we were passing that resolution. He said, good news, bad news, guys. Good news is you can make your own policy. Bad news is they wouldn't even give me a hearing. And I'm like, policy is the name of the game of uh, school board members. Go back to the CSBA, California School Board Association. That's, that's who most school districts pay to give them the policies or recommend policies, right? Now, you don't have to adopt exactly what they say, but with that, they are supposed to recommend policies, especially to keep you compliant as a school district with all the laws filtering down. Now, most school districts, most parents don't even know, most school districts, including our own at that time, had a policy that kept secrets in regards to this particular situation when it came to gender. So it wasn't like we just brought this issue up. This was a planned uh, attack from them on parents. Right. Unless you're searching through and you're paying attention, which prior to COVID, none of us 
the majority didn't pay attention, right? Um, these things were just being put in place because it's part of their bigger agenda. Well, we rescind, we ended up rescinding that. A coalition was formed. Attorneys, me as a school board per, uh, member, um, you had parents, you had people, you know, from our church that in real impact that was working in there. So many people from different groups and organizations were in this coalition. We brought forward a mindful policy that we worked hard on. We made sure we were compliant. In the same time, I was telling our superintendent, because we had a deal when I came in as a parent, there was going to be no surprises. I was going to be transparent about what I was going to work on. And I told him about this, and immediately he told me, this is illegal, Mrs. Shaw. This is illegal. And I'm, I'm like, okay, cool. Tell me where, the, what law? Mm-hmm. A couple months passed by, I want to say seven to eight weeks, if I can remember correctly. Um, and he comes to me one day when I say, we're ready to bring the policy. Do you have that law? I mean, contacted the JPA, contacted our attorneys, contacted everybody. I know there's no law. We, we consulted with attorneys. And we also know we had the Constitution on our side. Right. With parents having the, you said it exactly, parents having the right in the upbringing of their own children. With that said, he had the aha moment. Mr. Shaw, there is no law. I'm coming to find out. And I said, bingo, time to bring forward the policy. So you're bringing forward a policy, understanding that we don't live in a democracy. We live in a constitutional republic Republic (laughs) where we have a little thing called local control. Exactly. So so you're going to exercise local control on behalf of the parents. And you've got this policy that you worked with Bill Asaley, Assemblyman Asaley. He was on there, too. Okay. So so what happened? So we brought it forward. I believe in transparency. I asked, you know, how do we bring this forward the right way, not just sneak it in through tons and hundreds of pages like stuff is done in the past. And they said, um, well, you can bring it for a first reading publicly, and then you can bring it in for an action item instead of just like normal when you bring in policy, just kind of goes through consent or whatever it may be. And a board member can pull it and put it out in the public. But I was like, no, let's do it publicly. I'm not trying to hide anything. I want parents to actually know what was in place before because we rescinded the old policy as well. And so we brought it in for the first policy, and um, it was insane. You had every activist there, but you also, it was beautiful in the same sense that you had community members, parents, grandparents show up in support of it. Um, with that said, we brought it forward for the vote, and that's when Tony Thurman came off um, his throne. But we put it in place, and that was in July because I wanted everything done. Um, I asked for our staff to be trained. I, you keep hearing this narrative that we were requi- requiring the teachers to tell the parents. Right. That was not the case. It was it was train admin. The teachers were never to do the notification unless they personally wanted to. They were to tell admin who was trained to talk to parents in situations that could occur like this. And um, they were to give the notification. So with that said, I think that's a very important thing to say because they keep trying to play the victim of the teacher card. And right. that's not the case. Um, so we wanted all that done before the school year started. Long story short, it passes in July. Teachers get trained, you know, right before they come back to school, when they're coming back before they take the kids in their classroom. Principals are trained. Everybody knows how this is going to be handled. We had our attorney come do some training. Um, and then I think it was only in place for a couple weeks. Then we started, I mean, we immediately started getting letters and threats and open um, investigations. You know, you had every organization, ACLU, everybody after us, our attorneys and our superintendent, it, mind you, an attorney and our superintendent were being bullied by like eight from, a tur- you know, Abanta was sending into these Zoom calls to harass them, which I consider harassment. Um, they were trying to scare them to have us rescinded. And we said, no. And I think it was in the beginning of September, the first week of September, they filed a lawsuit on us. Bonta opened a lawsuit calling us parents, you know, dangerous Mm -hmm. and calling us board members who wanted transparency extremist. I don't think it's extreme to tell your, uh, tell a parent that, hey, your child wants to start becoming another sex. I don't like to use the word gender because I think that's their language. Let's be real. They want to, they want these kids to think they they could change their sex. Um, With that said, we held our guns, you know, we, we prayed about it. We were presented with a bunch of um, nonprofit attorneys that wanted to take the case. We ended up securing Liberty Justice Center, thank God, because we only had to endure that five-week time period, um, you know, using our own attorneys, which, you know, can become very costly. But we did the right thing. We got us out of that situation. We had Liberty Justice take it from that point on. And then you saw in June, we're still going to court. By the way, we have a court court date next Friday, right, for them suing us. Yeah. So we're still actively in there, but they knew they weren't going to check us. So that's what happened when they brought AB 1955 through. Right. 
So let's talk about AB 1955 for those that are watching that might not know what that is. Um, this is a bill that is in direct response to the policy that you put in place. And the policy that also Temecula, same policy, mm -hmm. our school board members who got attacked from the union activists, let's be real, they, you know, did horrible things to them, eventually led into a recall because they're lying to parents and community members and they have tons of money behind them. Um, Marietta, the same thing. You have um, school districts up north. You had about anywhere from eight to 12 of different variations of the policy, right? Mm -hmm that they were trying to bring us through. And what's beautiful is even though you had some school board members that didn't have the support and passed it, they still brought it to their community because their community was asking. It got voted down, but you had that happen, you know, in San Juan Capistrano, we saw, we, we saw all these, these school boards finally paying attention to, hey, why do we have a policy like this? Let's bring forward a parental notification. And that's because they were listening to their community. Right. That's important. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, th that was in a direct response because they knew they weren't going to win the end game. You, they might win the short end game, you know, the short games before that, but the end game, the long run, the Constitution's behind us, right. and they knew they had to stop us because we weren't going to stop. We brought forward another policy in Chino in the time being while we go through this process that informed parents of any any unofficial or official record change that upset them, and that's when the organization that is after us who essentially was part of the um, 1955 bringing it to war, uh, Assemblyman Ward was the organization that started with us on seating that person in school board. She has a lot of connections. She, um, you guys, pro I think you guys get attacked by their organization mm -hmm. here too, our oh, schools yeah. USA. They have different divisions. Um, they worked with these these um, legislators because they know they have the majority to bring in this false narrative. I mean, Chris Ward sat there and I'm like, who wrote the bill? Was it them or you? Because you can't even answer the questions. You kept passing it back to the representative of this organization. And that's embarrassing when a legislator right. doesn't even know how this bill is working, right? Um, but with that said, they brought it forward. And so we decided to then sue them alongside some parents. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, so we understand what's going on here is we have local control in a constitutional republic. You exercise local control based on what the families wanted. Um, as soon as you exercise that local control, the state comes along and says, we don't like you having local control, so we're going to legislate against your local control decision. Um, so so they put that bill in place. I, I was really watching to see when and if Gavin Newsom was going to sign it into law because yeah. he was, you know, there was talk of him making run for president. We didn't know what was going to go on with that. Of course, you, you know, if you're going to run for president, you certainly don't want to sign a law, uh, a bill into law, taking yep. rights away from parents. That doesn't exactly. look good for a campaign. So, so I was waiting to see what happened with that. And then as soon as he didn't run, as soon as it was clear he wasn't going to run for president, I said he's going to end up signing that bill. And sure enough, he, he signed it into law, uh, but immediately you were ready to yeah. fire back. So talk about what, what you guys are doing. So we saw the writing on the wall. Mm -hmm. It was clear that they weren't going to give this fight up, and neither were we. We're Like I said, we're still in that active lawsuit. So when we saw 1955 come through, I consulted with our attorneys, and I said, what can we do? What is going on? We cannot let this be signed without a fight, right? So if you go back to our, our board meetings during that process— you know, we brought forward a, um, a updated part of our contract that if it were to happen, we would enter into a lawsuit with Liberty Justice on our side. And we did that. So it's not like, to me, you have to be proactive instead of reactive, right? And and we were, we were in a position as parents for so many years to be reactive. Now it's time to be proactive on these situations. And that's what we wanted to do is show the parents, look, if they do this, don't worry, we're going to open suit. Now, we still have our current policy that provides protection because that's what they got upset about. Technically, because of FERPA, a parent still has the right to know. And you heard them in their, in their um, hearings for 1955. Well, what are you going to do when a parent asks? You can't lie. You have to tell them. But why should a parent have to go continuously ask what is being changed? Right. So we brought the policy forward that says if any unofficial record changes are done, including changing your name, right, or your gender, that's an unofficial record change, the parents will be notified. Now, you may not be specific in your notifications. You could say, Mrs. Shaw, today um, your child changed something on their unofficial record. My job as a parent and an active parent is to go and be like, what in the heck is happening? What is it, right? We're giving the, the, the opportunity, regardless of our hands being tied right now, back to the parent to be involved. And I think that's very important. I think it's sad we have to jump through all these hoops, 
but it shows what they want. And you're talking about the republic. You're talking about um, them want tying our hands at the local control. We didn't do anything illegal. Why are they at the top level now making everything we're doing illegal? You see it. It's, it's absolutely horrifying what they're putting into law with requirements on graduation. Our kids are failing at reading, writing, and math. They're not being taught the basics, but yet you have these activists pushing all these requirements into the school. Now, even with landlords, you saw that, right? They no, want. No. Uh, Tony Thurman came out with an initiative to house teachers. And that would be on our taxpayer dollars. Mm. So now you're asking a school district who's having a hard time because of what they're doing and pushing into our. You got you got to remember there is a lot of great people in these districts, right? There's a lot of great leadership. There's a lot of great teachers that are not activists, but their hands are tied because of what the requirements are. Now with that initiative, it's the same thing. They're taking away local control. They're telling the school districts now you're going to be land developers and with your extra land, and now you're going to house teachers. It's absolutely insane. And then on top of that, you have community schools. Right. Let's, let's pay attention. That's right. part of it. If yeah. you have housing on just schools. Just briefly, just in case my audience doesn't know, what is a community school? Community schools is pretty much, they are. it's their words. They're taking care of the whole child. So they'll take care of them from A through Z. You already see in L.A. It was first, I think, pushed in California through L.A. They already have Planned Parenthood, big corporations, special interest, going into where these wellness centers that most of our districts innocently adopted and put wellness centers because of the money coming down from COVID that was given. Right. These were part of the mental health things. They're turning in these wellness centers because now they have the space into clinics partnering with Planned Parenthood. And we all know where that happens with 12 and over kids can consent to doing abortions through the school time that right. they're there. And now you see with this gender affirming care that they're trying to push into law, AB 665, all these different laws that they're putting in place, it's by design. So community schools, they want to eventually house, feed, take care of medically, um, do everything that a child, that a parent should do for the child. They want to do it on campus. And they're calling it community. Let's work together. That's not their plan. They're trying to package it with a pretty bow because most parents, like before, when we weren't involved, would not even understand the dangers of what's going to happen. Right. If so, I can sum it up. Yeah. So well, that's perfect. And I think parents need to be aware that this is this is where it's headed. Many schools already have this. Riverside County. Yeah. Right. 58 yeah. schools mm -hmm. this school year just mm -hmm. took the grant money. Yeah. They're holding carrots to these mm -hmm. districts and they're taking it. Right. Yeah. So parents need to be very well aware. This is there's an agenda out to cut parents out of their child's life. Mm -hmm. um, so you're you're you filed a lawsuit yep. against the state for A B nineteen fifty five. Where is it at right now? How are you guys doing with it? So we're in the beginning stages. We just got assigned a judge. Um, we haven't had a date yet. Uh, we're like, it's very, very new. So, I mean, it's a long process. I mean, look at our old case. It was, you know, filed when we first did that back in, you know, the previous August. And we've had court dates. They've extended court dates. They've pushed them out because they're trying to buy, I think they're trying to buy time. But that's just my, my educated guess. Um, but with that said, it's, it's going to be a long process. That's why it's so important to make sure you have people with the best interest of families and kids in these positions so they could raise the flag when they see something, right? right? And they can also fight the good fight against it because if you don't, you're just going to be at those school board meetings like how I was, you know, a few years. I think it'll be two years in November, but prior we were at every school board meeting, um, begging, crying, yeah, and then eventually getting pissed off, right, to the point where we knew we had to change it. But I think it's important for the community to know this is going to be a long thing. This is a marathon it's not a sprint. We can have short sprints in between of, of wins. But I think the biggest thing is, is staying consistent, not letting these school boards that we do have the best interest of the majority of the community and more majority of California cave in, not allow these recalls to happen. Like when I saw the recalls starting in, in Orange and Temecula, what can we do? Let's go knock on doors. We're a community right. in its whole. This is an attack not just on Chino. Right. Just as parents we knew back in the day. Chino wasn't going to win against the cartel in Sacramento, right? I call them the political cartel, sorry. But we weren't going to win that unless we started uniting with all the other parents. Us right. board members, there's no way because these are these are not positions that we, you know, seek just like as they do to climb a political ladder. We're in there for the right reasons. But when you have people in the right reasons, they're going to come after you viciously. Mm -hmm. And that's right. what they're doing. Right. And unless their community supports them consistently through this process, that's what the, that's what Sacramento wants. They want us to give up because they make it so hard on you. They make it so hard on the staff. 
they make it completely hard on your superintendent, your cabinet. Because the your superintendent and cabinet, if they're not activists, which I've seen you guys have a different situation, they look like they were act, some of them were activists. Um, if they're not and they have the best interest, they're being bullied. They're being attacked. Your board has to now support them to be able to educate and make sure they're focused on education despite the, the noise, right? Right. So I think my biggest thing is we're in the beginning stages of pretty much both of these lawsuits. But the good thing is, is if we keep people that that want to protect children and families in these positions, we can win the long battle. Right. We just can't have these boards come in and cha- being changed because the first action that they'll take is getting rid of all of these things that we've worked so hard and dedicated and sacrificed so much to protect the kids, right? Right. Yeah, and it's it you know, you hit the nail on the head when you said it's a marathon. And pe- parents have to understand where we're at today didn't happen overnight. It wasn't a sprint to get to this spot. This is something they've been working on. The radical left has been working on this for decades now. Yes. Uh, they've been implementing it's kind of what I call the law of incrementalism. A little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, and they've slowly put all of this in place. And yeah, we can replace a board and we can rip a band-aid off real quick, but it doesn't mean that that the work is done. There is a long road ahead of us us to fix and undo what they've done we got we have a long road ahead of us um so we have to play that long game yeah you you're playing that long game um i want to ask you just on a personal level how have you been attacked as you've gone through this because here's the thing the bible says that we as christians are supposed to we're supposed to pray for everybody who's in authority that we can live quiet and peaceable lives and all godliness and reverence and it's hard to pray for somebody like you, that's in a position that you're in when we really don't know what you're going through and how we can be praying for you. So, so what's, what's been going on? Yeah. And I just want to say, I think some people that are getting into this newly, they think like me and others have been in these positions or we wanted to be in these positions. They forget that we're parents that just got in because, you know, a few years prior because of what's happening. But with that said, we're parents. So we don't understand. We never understood what we were signing up for which I will never go back and say I would never do this. But I I do have to say, when we first passed that policy, the day after, our district got a phone call to the receptionist, and they said, I'm going to dismember Sonia Shaw's body parts. More um, specifically, her limbs, right? And that's, you you have the superintendent calling me and saying, Ms. Shaw, I have to talk to you. And I'm like, oh, are we getting sued? I don't know. I was just thinking, like, what's happening? Are you getting harassed, you know? Because I knew he was being harassed prior. And he goes, no, something more important than that. And then he goes, we just got a call. The police are going to be on their way to your home. And I'm like, what the heck is happening? Like, is this really going to happen? And, you know, immediately the enemy had me vulnerable because I was scared at that point. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I'm a... my, I live, me and my dad, my husband and my family, my dad lives with us. We live our lives for the Lord. But during that time, you're like, whoa, what just happened? I'm bawling. I'm like, oh my gosh, they're going to come kill us. My kids are at school. Do I go pick them up? You're thinking all these things. And then immediately I was able to, you know, get a hold of our church and the leadership. And they were like reminding me, Sonia, God's got this, you know, blah, 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 giving me scripture, praying. Um, but with that said, it didn't get, it's not that it got any easier, but it put me back in my place to realize like, hey, you're in this position. Um, the enemy's going to be mad and they're going to come after you. After that, it was like, it was like a trend death threats, even from people in other parts of the nation. Mm-hmm. It was weird. Yeah. I, I remember one dude said he was going to, um, he was going to kill me. And he, he wrote a letter to the district. Come find out he was in, I think it was North Carolina, one of those. And he was somebody who always threatened, you know, conservative elective officials, but you're like, is he going to get on a plane? And they waved it off. And then you had another lady leave me demonic voicemails, multiple. And these are creepy voicemails saying, sleep with one eye open. We're coming for you. We're coming for your children. Um, Our police department's amazing. They ended up finding her, working with the Rangers up. She's from Berkeley. Um, She was camping. From Berkeley? No way. (laughs) And she was camping. I know, right? What's the odds? The bastion of free speech. Oh, my gosh. I think she was in um, Yellowstone or Yosemite, somewhere up in the pretty area having peace while my family was like, what is going on, you know? Um, Long story short, she was arrested, full-on confession, and then you had her almost be let go without anything until I had to, like, challenge that, right? We have to advocate for these people being held accountable. But again, the lawlessness that is happening is because of the elective officials and Newsom's, uh, you know, leadership or whatever you want to call him creating this land of lawlessness, creating this that we are the criminals and they are the victims, and right. that's what's happening. I have letters uh, Easter. 
Easter, right before Easter happened, a letter come. Um, it was in this cute rainbow writing typed out and it was from Texas. And it, I opened it up. My daughter's sitting next to me. We were at the mailbox because you have to drive to your mailbox where we live. And um, it said, almost to the T, I could tell you, you're not safe. Um, your child's not safe. We know where she, we know where you guys live. Let's play a game. And then that same address, well, it was it, they put another address for an elective official who is actually like a Republican in Texas. Go mm -hmm. figure. They're trying to set him up. Mm -hmm. Long story short, it just keeps continuing. Emails after emails saying, we, I had Antifa say, I'm going to declare war. We're declaring war on you. Here's Sonia Shaw's address. They can't get in trouble. It's not a direct threat. But what do they mean, declare war? And here's my address. She, we, oh, she needs to be stopped at all cost. She needs to feel the pain, blah, blah, blah. But they know how to get away with it. They're trained, right? right. They're trained, and the system protects them. Right. It protects doesn't protect them. the actual people right. who are in harm. Mm -hmm. It protects, the, again, what I consider a criminal. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's just been nonstop. Uh, words of hate, you know, you just got to let it roll off your back. Um, I wasn't, I didn't grow up in a very easy environment. So I think some of that probably has to do with being able to endure it. But the most important part, God gives us the strength. Yeah. I'm human. It hurts. I don't want to go in the grocery store and think, do I have to duck? Is someone going to hit me or my family? I've had my kids filmed in grocery stores. Yeah. Um, I don't, I can go on and on about the And yet you're the attacks. hateful one. <laughs> I guess right. it's it's it, the hypocrisy. Their hypocrisy knows no bounds. Um, how can we be praying for you and your family? I would think prayer on direction, guidance, our health, our finances. You got to imagine when the enemy's mad, he's going to attack everything. And if he can't get through one thing because of constant prayer, then we got to switch and pray on that other thing, right? Like you, every aspect of our lives has been attacked, um, especially living in California. A prayer for families to be able to survive this and actually have the energy to fight this fight because I feel like again by design it, they're making it hard to feed our families they're making it hard you know with things raised up through the roof you see eggs two dozens of eggs were on one of our local grocery stores for $23 yeah. how can we afford this in a long term like a lot of us are getting into debt when we you know when I should maybe be going and getting three jobs to help provide with my husband, I'm sitting here fighting the good fight. So I think it's just prayer for protection over all aspects and prayer for protection of anybody in a situation, prayer for our pastors to be bold, like, you know, yourself and our pastor, Jack, um, churches to start standing up and realizing like, this is not political. This is a moral thing. These are hurting families. These are breaking up God's design. And I, I think if we pray on those things, I think we can endure the long battle. Yeah. Um, I don't, sometimes I feel like my peace shouldn't be at, oh, we're going to win a lawsuit. We're going to win this. No, we're, my peace is knowing that through this process, God, people are exposed to God mm -hmm. and they only can fall down to him and say, God help. Right. Where before it was just like a smooth sailing type thing, you know, oh, nobody's bothering us. We're going to work. We're doing this. We're providing, not saying that was bad, but we didn't realize what the true evils were. Right. Mm -hmm. Until it, hit us right in the face. Right. And sometimes we need that. I needed that. My husband needed that. Um, we weren't involved in that level. And look at us now. I, I always set, tell people we're making up for it. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, just prayer on all of it. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll definitely be praying for you. How can my audience follow you and watch what you're doing? Okay. So I'm really bad at social media. I'm trying because I know we have a lot to be able to get out there and expose. But a lot of my energy is just being a mom and focusing on this fight in front of me. Um, but with that said, I do have an Instagram. I think it's, what did I change it to? Sonia Shaw 2026. That's my next term I would be okay. running for. Um, well, other, we'll make sure that we put that in the, yeah. the comments here so people can other take a look at that. Other than that, I think that's a good way to yeah. reach out to me. Mm -hmm. If I don't respond, do it again. And whatever's new in there, you know, you can respond to. But okay. um, I think just connecting with other parents, connecting with other parent groups is going to be the biggest help. Not necessarily connecting directly with, you know, us. It's right. what we designed as parents. Start connecting with each other. Start supporting each other. Right. We need the, everybody needs to support each other. If you see one community get attacked, group up because that's what they do. They mm -hmm. get special interests right. from all over the nation to come help them. Right. So yeah. I think that's important. Absolutely. Well, Sonia, we will definitely be praying for you. Um, we'll definitely uh, put your your Instagram out there so people can follow you. And I just want to thank you for all that you're doing. I want to thank you so much for joining us today on our watch.
Thank you. I appreciate thank you. Thank you. And I want to thank you all for tuning in. Uh, as you know, this is a very important topic. We need to make sure that parents are connected with these issues. They're very well aware of what's going on so they can be a part of the solution because we have a massive, massive problem on our hands. So make sure you like this video, share it out with your friends, your family, your neighbors. Head on over to our watch, subscribe, become one of our watchmen. We'd really appreciate that. Until next time, we'll see you right here on our watch. Tim